Okay, welcome. Um, so in this video, we're talking about firm entry and exit with perfectly competitive markets. Um, so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be given just a little bit of information about this firm's like cost schedule. Uh, we're going to be given information about their variable cost, you know, at different levels of production, and then we'll be given some information about their um, fixed cost, and then we're going to determine, you know, at given different prices, uh, given different prices, uh, whether or not we expect firms to enter or exit the market, uh, given that this market's perfectly competitive. Uh, in the video description, I'll link to more similar videos uh, related to microeconomics, intro to microeconomics, uh, and then also a uh, link to little parts uh, where you could skip ahead if you want to skip ahead to a particular part of the video. Cool. So let's get started. Um, this question is borrowed from Krugman Wells, Microeconomics Second Edition, uh, in the chapter on perfect competition and the supply curve. So the question reads, Bob produces DVD movies for sale, which require a building and a machine that copies the original movies onto DVD. Bob rents a building at $30,000 $30, per month and then rents the machines at uh, $20,000 a month. So total fixed cost, $50,000 a month. Uh, those are his fixed costs. His variable cost per month is given with the accompanying table. So variable cost is something that varies with quantity produced. So given different quantities of DVDs produced, you could see the variable cost. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is calculate total cost. Total cost uh, is just fixed cost, so that $50,000, plus variable cost. So pretty simple to calculate. Except for me. Okay. So, you know, at uh, zero units produced, there's zero variable costs. So the, to the total cost is just 50,000. Uh, so uh, at 1,000 units produced and a variable cost of 5,000, the total cost is 55,000. Uh, and then let's just fill out the rest. So again, all I'm doing is taking the variable cost and I'm adding in the fixed cost. Not doing very well with math. So up next, now we're going to calculate. Um, marginal cost. So marginal cost is equal to marginal cost is equal to the change in total cost. So the change in total cost divided by the change in quantity. The change in quantity. So marginal cost kind of fits in between each of these rows, where this is the row associated with zero quantity of DVDs produced, and this is the row associated with 1,000 DVDs produced. The marginal cost is kind of fitting in between these two rows. So it's the marginal cost of going from zero DVDs produced to 1,000. So uh, let's just plug it in. So marginal cost of going from zero to 1,000 is the difference between total cost. So 55,000 minus 50,000, that's 5,000, <coughs> divided by the change in uh, DVDs produced, so going from zero to a thousand. So the change in quantity is a thousand. The change in total cost is five thousand. So that's five thousand divided by a um, thousand gives a marginal cost of five bucks. Following the same pattern here, the marginal cost from one thousand DVDs produced to two thousand DVDs produced is the difference between the total cost there. So that's three thousand is the difference here divided by the change in quantity, a thousand. So it's going to be a marginal cost of three. Uh, and then, yeah, we just continue with that pattern all the way down and we find the marginal cost. So one big thing I just want to point out to you is marginal cost, again, uh, you know, just for the sake of organization, I put the row of, you know, five dollar marginal cost right here. So it appears it's on the same row as a thousand. But marginal cost, again, it fits in between uh, two quantity levels. So this $5 marginal cost is the marginal cost of going from zero um, DVDs produced to 1,000. And then similarly, the marginal cost of you know $51 down here, that's the marginal cost of going from 9,000 DVDs to produced to 1,000 DVDs produced. So it kind of fits in between, just to be perfectly fair. Um, so up next is average variable cost. 
average variable cost is equal to variable cost, which we have over in this column over here, divided by quantity, which we have in this column over here. So the average variable cost for 1,000 DVDs produced is just 5,000 divided by 1,000, or $5. Uh, I've done this many times in other tutorials, so I'm just going to kind of skip the math here. Um, all it is is variable cost divided by quantity. Um, pretty simple calculation. Uh, and moving on to average total cost, um, all we're doing is taking the total cost, so in this case 55,000 divided by quantity, in this case 1,000, so it gives an average total cost of uh, $55. Uh, similarly, you know, I've covered average total cost before, um, so you could just grind out the solutions to get the average total cost here. Um, one thing, notice that um, you know, initially average variable cost is going down, so the, the average variable cost of a DVD is decreasing, but after some point, it starts going up. Um, and then similarly, average total cost, uh, early on, the average uh, total cost is going down, but then there's some point with the minimum average variable cost where things start increasing, and we get uh, increasing average total costs. And that, you know, kind of familiar U-shape for the average variable cost and average total cost has to do with just diminishing returns. Um, you know, fixed costs uh, are always diminishing as you increase production because you're dividing that fixed cost over an increasingly large number of uh, output, you know, so like $50,000 divided by 1,000 units produced is quite a bit. Um, but if you could divide those $50,000 fixed costs over a you know, huge quantity produced say 10,000, then the, you know, the portion that each individual DVD, you know, has to pay towards the fixed cost is rather small. Variable cost doesn't quite work like that. Um, we kind of assume diminishing returns to, var to variable cost where as at some point where you start increasing production, um, you know, average variable costs are going to start increasing. Um, okay, but that's beside the point. That's not why you're here. You're here for firm entry and exit. So what we've done already is calculate Bob's average variable cost, um, average total cost, and marginal cost for each quantity of output. So uh, there, let's go to question B. There is um, free entry and exit into the industry. So um, anyone who enters is going to face the exact same cost as Bob here. So any firm who's thinking about who's contemplating entering this industry is going to have a similar cost structure to what we just saw right here. Um, suppose that currently the price of a DVD is $25. What will Bob's profit be? Okay, so um, we know that the price of a DVD is 25 bucks. So what level of production is Bob going to produce at? Uh, remember that a firm optimizes their profit, or you know, in parentheses, you know, minimizes its loss when they set their uh, quantity of production uh, such that marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue. In this case, marginal revenue is just price. So we want to choose a, a, a quantity of production such that uh, the marginal cost here is equal to this $25. So we're going to produce at 8,000. And the reason why is, remember this 23 here level here is going from 7,000 to 8,000. And this 27 marginal cost is going from 8,000 to 9,000, like we discussed. So approximately a marginal cost is going to be approximately around the 8,000 quantity level. So this firm is going to maximize its profits by producing right around 8,000 DVDs. Um, so that's the level of production. So given a price of 25 bucks, uh, the question then is, well, what level of production does the firm produce at? Well, to answer that, you go to the marginal cost, uh, and you see the closest uh, quantity associated with it, so 8,000, um, because it's between this 23 and 27. That's, that's our 8,000 level with the marginal cost of about 25. Okay, so what's the profit going to be? So um, in terms of revenue, let's see here. So revenue is going to be the $25 times 8,000. So 25 times 8,000 gives a revenue of 200,000. And then what are the cost? So the um, producing 8,000, the total cost is going to be 122,000. 
Um, similarly, what we could have done is taken the 8,000 quantity DVDs and times it by the average total cost. And the average total cost of 15.25 to give the 122,000. I think I had a number there wrong. Anyway, for some reason, decimal points don't work here. Um, yeah, so the average, the total cost is 122,000. So that gives a total profit of what is that? So that gives a total profit of 2,000 minus the cost of 122,000. So it gives a total profit of 78,000. So Bob's profit in the short run is going to be $78,000. Um, now the next question is, is this in long run equilibrium? Well, this is where firm entry and exit comes in. So in the short term, it's totally reasonable that, uh, you know, for some reason, firms can't enter and exit in the short run. Um, so for a while, Bob could be making this, this profit, economic profit of $78,000. But in the long run, the idea is that we're told ahead of time that there's free entry into this industry. You know, it's perfectly competitive. So anyone could enter faces the same cost as Bob. So people thinking about entering this DVD production business, they're going to see that Bob, you know, facing the same cost, they're going to see Bob makes all of his money. So the idea is that additional firms are going to be entering into the market and able to undercut um, Bob's price. You know, another firm could enter in and say offer 25 bucks or something. Uh, 24 bucks, let's say, or 23 bucks. And looking at this, we know that the firm's still going to be profitable. You know, there was $78,000 in profits, and so lowering the price a little bit, uh, they'll still be able to make profits. So in the long run, the idea is that firms are going to continue to enter into the market, um, and, and that process is going to undercut that market price, bring down the price uh, in the long run, um, to the point where the, there's no economic profits to be made anymore. So anytime, especially in a perfectly competitive market, that there's some economic profits, the idea is that the firms will enter into the market, uh, which will drive down the price. That's kind of a shift out in the supply curve. So in the long run, um, the idea here is that where a company like Bob's can make an economic profit now, you know, in the short run, in the very long run, additional firms are going to enter the market, which will eventually push down the price for the for DVDs in this market. Um, and then the the point where things are going to stop, where an equilibrium is reached, is when the average total cost is at its minimum. So its minimum here is about thirteen eighty three, with a quantity produced of six thousand DVDs per firm. Um, so in the long run, the, the you know the the long run price for DVDs in this market is going to be thirteen eighty three. Cool. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know, and then uh, be sure to check out the links in the video in the uh, description of this video for additional resources. Thanks, and have a good day. Bye.